put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. If the video is too long for you, I have recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. Santium Moon Review. A mother-daughter vampire family moved to a sleepy little, I don't know, harbor town, you know, beach kind of, yeah, small town, and they move into this rundown hotel which the mother gradually turns into a brothel, and they're trying to hide from male vampires and also keep their secret. Now, this is slow-paced and the story is told gradually with flashbacks that are out of order and to an extent the movie keeps some secrets close to its chest. I will say that if you pay close attention and you you know make sure to pick up all the clues and sort of you know ponder it for a while after watching it watch it twice and then you know yeah mentally rearrange to try to find the 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 chronological order and you know clues and such i feel like i'm starting to repeat myself about that then you can follow what what goes on and what has happened it's it's not a movie where you just there there are things that at the end of the day you just can't quite understand when you've watched it really yeah it, it does all make sense and and go together now both the start and the end of this are kind of action scenes and I found that yeah both really grab your attention now as the director Neil Jordan also directed interview with the vampire you know obviously to, to briefly give my yeah general opinion on that one haven't read the book Kirsten Dunst is amazing I do find Pitt's character frustratingly passive and that is the only other Neil Jordan movie that I have watched and this has been compared to Twilight I haven't watched Twilight but I have watched all the videos that Spoonie, Nostalgia Critic, and you know Brad Jones and his friends have done on them. And I also haven't seen the play that this movie is based on. And arguably, it should maybe have been someone else adapting this than the writer of the play. It she may not fully be able to. She, she may not fully have a, I want to insult her, have a good grasp, a, a sufficient grasp on the language of film versus the language of theater stage plays. Now, there is not a, lo a lot of forward momentum in this. The, the two of them are basically just trying to avoid being found out and there's not a lot of consequence in the film basically something only really happens at the very start of the film and the very end of the film and everything else is just kind of I wasn't bored but but basically everything else is just character study and sort of how these two relate to different people. Now, the the dialogue is fairly clunky and it spells out metaphors rather than letting them speak for themselves. And there are some 
fantastic metaphors and amazing imagery in this. And at points it kind of plays out like a soap opera. Now, where the mother Clara is forced into sex work and then, you know, is abused there and then she uses the fact that she's been sexualized to her own ends, making a strength out of a bad situation. And she's very protective and possessive of her daughter, Eleanor. She is a vigilante against men who hurt women, but she does also, you know, she hires women to the brothel, so she she does kind of keep that situation going now. And she's the more dynamic of the two characters. And the, the daughter Eleanor writes her story and throws the papers to the wind. She has to deal with all this angst in some way, and it's, this is the only way she can. You know, she can't tell the truth. And she only kills people who are ready to die as sort of a favor or even a good thing. Although she is still conflicted about it. And she wears a red hood. She is kind of a sport teenager. And the, the two of them claim to be sisters, which is both a believable lie and also kind of a sisterhood thing that, you know... They're, they're women and they're looking out for their own gender in a male-dominated world. Now, I took some last-minute notes, so I'm going to be using this again. Early on, I was a little worried that this would, that this would present sex work as that all men who yeah who who in one way or another be it you know yeah there are there are many forms of sex work that not every man who seeks out a woman that is necessarily an abusive you know yeah is is yeah abusive and yeah the the movie doesn't to try to say that. Rather, some of these men are just lonely and, yeah, need human companionship. And I was very happy to see it's it's a sex positive movie, which, yeah, pretty big. I greatly prefer those. I, I was really wor worried that it was going to go with this kind of thing that all women in sex work are forced into it and hate it and just want to leave and all the men who you know yeah who, who use their services in one way or another are abusive and awful and yeah now the movie's 110 minutes not counting the end credits I, I quite like the the contrast between both Clara and Eleanor and some of the people that they meet. However, I did find Eleanor to be a very frustrating character because basically the one at one point Clara tells her we have one rule don't tell anybody about it and with with Eleanor it's like she has no offense, Tourette's or something. It's the first thing she says to everybody who even says hi to her. It's like she just, she blurts out, "I'm a vampire. I'm 200 years old. I like to drink blood. I drink blood to to." And and it's just you don't believe that she's been able to keep the secret for this long. You you just do not believe it. And at the same time, yeah, I I get it. She's she's. She needs to get it out in one way or another. And she does at one point say she was raised to tell the truth. But it's just, 
yeah, we, we as the audience sit there, come on, just say something else, you know, claim that this is, you know, and it's also a lot of people don't really believe her, they just take it as, you know, oh, well, she, she, she's asked, you know, where did you learn to play the piano? Oh, I, I practiced. For how long? 200 years. And the other person's like, yeah, it feels that long, doesn't it? It's, and she says it without a, a hint of irony or sarcasm or anything. So it's just, yeah, that was an aspect that really did not work for the movie. Now, but but yes, yeah, so where Eleanor is very honest and forthright, Clara is more seductive and, as Eleanor puts it at one point, she is more comfortable with lying. And she, yeah, to, to briefly go into more detail about it, I, I mentioned how she uses the fact that she's been sexualized and she is a bit of a vigilante, Basically, she lures in men by posing as a sex war or pretending to be into them or the like. And, yeah, if they, you know, if, if it's necessary to keep the secret or if it's just, if it's an abusive person and, you know, and the movie usually men, then, yeah, you know, she lures them into a secret place, kills them and... Yeah, so so there's that kind of yeah, they they have very different experiences with their va vampirism. And where where Eleanor is very much kind of trying to deal with her past, trying to you know, she's she's been hurried along. She hasn't had time to, or she hasn't really been able to deal with the, yeah, the secret she keeps. And Clara, on the other hand, is very, you know, she says early on, I live in the present. She is just kind of going from, the, making the most of the situation. Now... And it's very much that Claire, Eleanor is trying to deal with the, you know, the situation, whereas Clara has basically accepted it. And there are several codes that, you know, characters live by, that, excuse me, groups live by, and yeah code rules of, of how to act. Now, and Eleanor goes by the name Ella, while Clara goes by Camilla to, you know, yeah, to, to hide their real identity. And Eleanor keeps having these, at times they appear to be visions, but they they are kind of memories and, and such and you know that's how she is further you know taken out of any sort of, of comfort of, of being comfortable with with where she is when she is that she keeps she's haunted not in the literal sense by yeah these these memories and Clara, on the other hand, has these songs that are very, some are like very old and, you know, it somewhat keeps the two of them together and again, Clara has sort of accepted where, where she is and who she is. Now, another is the way that the when Eleanor relates to other people, they're often old and dying, maybe ready to die. As, as said, that's those are the people that she kills. And yeah, it's this, you know, someone who's been young for 200 years and someone who has 
been growing old for decades, maybe half a century or the like, and yeah, Eleanor trying to deal with living forever, and these, you know, elderly people who are ready to die. Now, I basically some people have said that this is you know too slow or maybe, maybe even boring. I was never really bored, but the last fourth it came very close, and then you know the action scene happened, and that was a yeah that that got me back into it but but yeah you know if you don't want a character study this is not for you basically there's uh, yeah this is this is one of those movies where human flesh is just easily penetrable by by just nothing you know where you you can kill someone just you know if you if you have like a a steel rod and you push it like into someone it just goes right through like there's just nothing you know it's uh... from dust till dawn actually explains this you know it says you know all oh, these these vampires they have really thin skins like you you know you can you can punch someone take their head right off you know and that's probably the only movie i can where, where it's actually explained and, and that's almost kind of you know that's a Tarantino Rodriguez thing so you know they're they're playing with tropes and yeah it's just it's it's distracting and it's especially because this is not otherwise you know other than the vampires this is fairly set in the real world and yeah, for that, it's it's distracting. You know, it's it's a different thing in these action movies and horror movies that are over the top already in, in other respects. Now, there there are several exchanges between Claire and Eleanor where one of them pointedly says "don't" and the other responds "I won't," and yeah, it's it's there's there's a shorthand. You know, they've known each other for so long. They know, they both know what they're referring to. There, you know, it's it's what is it? Simpson says it's 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 not technically the pronoun game, but it's it's a cousin of the pronoun game. Yes, he says in the was it Maze Runner? You know, everything wrong with Maze Runner, and you know. But but they know exactly what they're you know talking about, and we realize it. And yeah, that was, that was a good element. Now, the I already mentioned that you know Clara is very sexualized, and so are some other women in this. And this is the film can be very sexy, but at times also kind of, you know, unpleasant with with the sex. You know, you you see, you know, actual women living on the streets and selling their bodies. You know, but the movie sometimes really sexualizes women where it really doesn't make sense. There are scenes where, you know, someone might be coughing up blood and still be very sexualized. And this is, it doesn't have to be that way. You can have someone in a sort of, because the thing is, the movie, it doesn't feel like we're supposed to be turned off by what we're watching. It feels like we're supposed to ignore the part that would be a turn off. And you know, I mean, the movie never reaches like Skinamax or or you know cheesy that kind of thing. But it it is still a little strange this this element because 
if you watch something like the, the German film Christian F, that has, you know, women having to sell themselves and the like, but not looking sexy to us, the audience. We're, we're kind of just what, you know, it's, it's kind of this thing where we wouldn't want to have sex in that situation with that person. We, you know, we, we kind of look at it and say, oh, you know, can, can, you know, give her a, give her a coat, take her, you know, buy her a, a good, you know, a good meal and get her into a place where she can get out of that situation, you know, and, and yeah, here, not so much. You know, yeah, here, here it feels sexy when it's, it feels like it's supposed to be sexy. Now, there's, there's some really great restrained acting, you know, what's her name, Sowers? Sahas Ronan, if, if that's how you pronounce it, and Gemma Arterton, both do fantastic. And, yeah, it's, you know, restrained action because of the characters that they're portraying, where, again, Eleanor is this very, just, you know, it's it's right under the, you know, she, she clearly really wants to let someone in. And you know, Clara, she, we see her in several different moods. It's very much based on who she's talking to and the situation. And it, you know, there's, yeah, the, the lying almost is second nature to her. It, it really shows that she has been in this situation for centuries, you know, she, and, and especially in this sexualized role where she has to you know basically just has to convince the man you know no matter who she's with she can't let on if she's uncomfortable she can't you know and if if he I, I mentioned that there's a scene you know where a man turns out to just be lonely and she's the sex worker in that scene and she reacts very nurturing in, in a very nurturing manner where you know I mean technically she just lost a possible you know yeah she she just lost money that she could have earned by you know the depends on whether he wants the money back or not, but, you know, some might be frustrated in that situation, but she immediately becomes very nurturing, and this is, of course, also in part of how she is towards Eleanor, who, I, I mentioned, you know, she, she sings, there's one scene where she sings to Eleanor, and Eleanor kind of cuddles up to her, almost like they are, you know, a young mother and her child. And there's a, but, but yeah, that's, that's part of why she's so nurturing. And another is she's used to, you know, when, when a man is acting a certain way towards her, she should just, you know, basically just, you know, agree with them, just go along with what they're thinking, what they want and the like. Now, the, I mentioned that the, the, you know, the, the male vampires have this sort of, basically there's the, 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 the vampires in this movie, there's a brotherhood, only male vampires are accepted. And that is, you know, part of, you know, making this a very feminist piece, but they do become a bit one note. There's, there's not a lot of room for different, you know, 
types of you know vampires in this brotherhood and it doesn't really yeah there's you you don't quite it's it's not really explained where yeah how how that is yeah now where interview with a vampire is theatrical and masculine this is modern and feminist take on vampirism and 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 the you know male the, the brotherhood of vampires also sees this you know brothel activity as lowly and Neil Jordan still you know he manages to get this really gothic you know gothic horror atmosphere now some have said this is worse than Twilight I can see what elements they're referring to again what I've heard of Twilight I would absolutely hate each of those films and yeah I I enjoyed this film I'd, I'd watch it again now and this has been compared to Let the Right One In. That I can definitely see. I would say that that's the better of the two. Now, rather than fangs, the vampires in this have very pointed fingernails. And it's like the fangs, they, you know, they grow out. They, they, you know, yeah, they're they're not always there, and there are these images where it's used against a the the you know a a vein along the you know the wrist. So basically, yeah, conjuring up these images of suicide and you know maybe assisted suicide. Now, at, at one point, Gemma, you know, Clara showers in a waterfall of blood, and yeah, there's of course some interesting metaphors there. Others have already pointed out this is more interesting to analyze than to actually watch. And yeah, if again, you know, yeah, if if it's not, yeah, if if what I say about this leads you to think that it's not really for you, then it probably isn't, and that's not any insult to to you, you know. Now. The there there is you know blood and gore in this a fairly large amount in some scenes. Now it very early on it's you know set up that they've run out of places to hide. They're actually where they are now. They've been before, you know, and. Yeah, you know, hundreds of years running and hiding because they're they're not trying to stop the brotherhood, they're just trying to hide from them. And yeah, you know, in in time you run out and it also it says something about something needs to change, you know. And and this is again this is Eleanor pointing this out and Clara kind of she may not even believe that they've been there before or she may just not really care and she yeah it's you know yeah that that shows that Eleanor needs something to happen to to change whereas Clara is comfortable with the way things are and it is very much 
about this teenage girl who has to, you know, there, during our teenage years, or maybe at the end of our teenage years, we have to move away from our parents. There, it's, it's only natural to start our own life. And yeah, that's part of what happens here. And, you know, it has the element that they're both vampires and that, you know, they have remained the same age for hundreds of years. And this is not the first time that, you know, it's not upon moving to this place that suddenly things are really, you know, I mean, it's, it's clear that Eleanor really wishes they didn't have to move, but she didn't, she didn't just now, she didn't, only at the start of what we see in the movie, actually need something to change. Now, a lot of the effects are really not very good. They're, they're very obviously fake. There's some really convenient writing. This somewhat lacks focus. I've sort of already hinted, but this has beautiful cinematography. It plays it too safe. And this is very much a drama, not a horror movie. And... Unlike Stoker, I would say that this one is interesting after you know what's really going on. Like, like I said, you know, it, you're piecing together over the course of the film what essentially could have been, you know, yeah, you, you find out a lot of backstory along the way and it wouldn't have had the same effect, but there's probably someone out there who has or will re-edit this to put it in completely in chronological order and again they won't have the same cinematic effect and emotional impact but it it might not really need to have been told in this way it's sort of like with Stover it reveals that ultimately what is going on and what has happened in their past or in that it's what's actually going on and this is what's happened in their past is not as interesting as you know good twists are where it really changes things and you know when you when you know it changes everything else you've seen and you know yeah in when when a film plays out the revelations along the way should make things more interesting and in this in this it's kind of more that the yeah the the reveals just aren't that interesting and it yeah it, it again it's because there are not a lot of developments not a lot happens in this movie and if the backstory wasn't being revealed like that yeah it probably in that case I might have been bored please comment thumbs up and subscribe for more content